America has a problem. Well, to be more precise, it has a few of them. From aging infrastructure and climate concerns, to imbalanced population density and rising income equality, from urban decay to suburban sprawl, poor city planning, congestion, and a cost of living that's out of step with median wages. These kitchen table issues have become a real distraction. Prices in the U.S. are climbing at their fastest rate in 40 years. Between inflation and me, inflation's winning. <laughs> it wasn't always like this. No, several decades ago, the U.S. was roaring into an era of newfound prosperity, with a booming middle class and growing stability. Back when the Midwest was touted as America's heartland and its greatest source of a bigger and brighter future. Of course, it didn't quite play out like that, as the manufacturing core behind its incredible rise broke down when the factories that the region depended on most left for places like China while millions of residents moved away, which left the Midwest in a frenzy, struggling with decay and decline after losing the most productive portion of its tax base. We had a lot of vacant houses that are beautiful brick houses people walked away from when they were underwater in their mortgage. We started auctioning them on our own website. While we often see these terms, Midwest, Rust Belt, and Great Lakes used interchangeably to explain this general area of the United States, where coal-worn Appalachia overlaps rural New York and former factory towns like Pittsburgh, Cleveland, and Gary, Indiana are looped in with the nation's third largest city of Chicago and places like Indianapolis, Detroit, and Madison. That definition of the Midwest misses the forest for the trees. As the Rust Belt is just a small economic region that includes portions of New York and Pennsylvania, while the Great Lakes region is located as much in Canada as the United States. The Midwest is more important and widespread, stretching us as far north as Minnesota and North Dakota, and as far west as Kansas and South Dakota, as the Midwest is arguably the most important region of the United States. Maybe not today, probably not in the next few years, and perhaps not even for another decade or so. But eventually, the same kind of circumstances that made Detroit America's fifth biggest city and Cleveland and St. Louis its seventh and eighth will resurface, providing the Midwest with a rare second chance at economic and population success. It won't be like it was back in the 1950s, a time when Americans were still proud to be making things and the Midwest was the nation's fastest growing economic engine, but it might be more similar than you would expect. This is a map of the expected future drought in the United States. This one depicts severe weather. This one looks at flood risks. Phoenix also ranks 11th worst for daily particle pollution, also referred to as PM. While ozone is typically invisible, you can oftentimes see the results of high levels of particle pollution. As you can see, climate concerns cast a shadow over many of America's most popular cities and regions, and those concerns are significantly worsened by the depletion of important water sources like the Colorado River due to overpopulation and overutilization. But then there's the Midwest, often overlooked despite its vast natural resources, good soil, and nearly 70 million current residents. The Midwest is located near Canada, one of the nation's top trade partners, and borders the prosperous and populous Northeast Corridor with proximity to four major North American mega-regions. And the Midwest is home to important U.S. institutions like Northwestern University, the Cleveland Clinic, and the Chicago Options Exchange along with the headquarters of essential American businesses like McDonald's, Boeing, Target, and General Motors, and some of the world's most famous attractions like the Mall of America, Mount Rushmore, and Willis Tower. And the Midwest is fast becoming America's most geographically stable region with less climate concerns, a central location, and easier topography. But it's also a powerful region, with a level of infrastructure and amenities that are only possible because of what the region once represented. That's why the Midwest is making a real comeback. It isn't even a question anymore or some kind of hypothetical what if. It's a process that will take time and hard work, but Midwesterners, known for their strong work ethic and family values, are ready to bring back the kind of prosperity their region was once known for. And I think the US on the whole is ready for it too as the Midwest is the most affordable region of the United States with solid overall safety and, like I was saying before, natural economic and geographic advantages. That and regular folks are growing tired of the natural disadvantages, overpopulation, and rising costs of America's current growth regions as the balance between economics and population can be very delicate. And the Midwest's journey to resurgence starts where its last boom left off as it still boasts some of the nation's strongest manufacturing chops. 
In fact, 24-7 Wall Street says that when you account for percentage-based economics, Wisconsin and Indiana depend on production jobs more than other U.S. states, with both states having a manufacturing workforce that doubles the national average. Of course, the Midwest wouldn't be evolving if it weren't changing, and its comeback is based mostly on modern growth industries and a shifting workforce. In 2021, John McCormick of the Washington Post argued that Midwestern cities are diversifying faster than any other U.S. cities. That's due in large part to the region's affordability, but also how years of decline have resulted in lean cities open to unique opportunities, and a lower cost of living and labor in the Midwest has granted opportunity to young entrepreneurs that simply wouldn't have had a chance in traditional incubator cities like San Francisco. That's why, despite my belief that it's unnecessary to give every place its own Silicon City moniker, the Midwest as a Silicon Prairie makes a lot of sense. There are plenty of high-ranking universities in the Midwest. Northwestern, the University of Chicago, Notre Dame, and the University of Michigan all have the capacity to add the kind of highly skilled graduates needed for a modern technology-based economy. Midwestern workers also enjoy a growing capacity to work from home, giving them access to businesses that otherwise only exist in the most expensive U.S. cities at the cost of an Ohio, Missouri, or Kansas. It isn't just the option to work from home, startup endeavors, and the emerging tech scene taking over the Midwest, though. The region has become central to modern logistics, opening its doors to some of the nation's most recognizable distribution businesses, with millions of square feet of warehousing opening near places like Indianapolis, Detroit, and Milwaukee in recent years. And over just the past decade, venture capital has quadrupled in the Midwest, with a total of 18,000 startups in the region today. While well, Salesforce recently placed its second largest U.S. office in Indianapolis, Infosys is building out a 3,000-person office in Indianapolis, and Intel has committed to investing $20 billion in Central Ohio. Two former Sequoia Capital founders launched Drive Capital in Columbus, Ohio, and Upstart's HQ2 in Columbus has surpassed the company's Silicon Valley headquarters. Detroit startup StockX raised over $150 million in 2021, while Chicago startups SpotOn and ShipBob raised a total of half a billion dollars, and Ohio VC funding surpassed $2 billion last year, turning parentheses into commas in the region of the United States that needed it the most, and Midwestern cities haven't only been focused on diversifying into these growth sectors either. The region has invested heavily in quality of life improvements, building from their depleted tax base and labor pipeline with concentrated moves in education, infrastructure, and city development, by renewing aging roadways, turning urban blight into green spaces, and pushing for two-year degrees and technical certifications. And the Midwest's new regional rail plan, which looks to build one of the nation's most complex high-speed railway systems across an area about the size of France, is looking to get started in Chicago soon. Thank you for watching and please subscribe. Here's another video of mine that YouTube thinks you will enjoy next.